put your hands together for Jesus, and you may take your seat. Praise the Lord. Now listen. We've been talking about understanding how faith works. Every one of these previews in the service is just to put an addiction to you. How faith works. The air condition or this um, uh, air coolant is working. I'm sure technical unit has some time, I think they have removed or dismantled this particular mechanical uh, gadget because there's a way it works. And there's an attached thing called a manual that tells you how it works. If you must have cool air blowing on it consistently, you must know how it works. Now, listen. Your life is a privileged gadget. Just like man created this, God created you. Sorry, young man. Please, can you stand up? So, there is a way. What's your name, sir? Menichim. Huh? Menichim, Menichim. 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 Menichim, okay. There's a way Menichim is expected to work. Now, listen. This machine is working. He is also working. He's a design of God. He's wonderful and fearfully made of God. A lack of understanding of what makes things work for him. That's where things begin to go out of place. Please, you may be seated, please. Many don't know why things work here. Have you not ever thought, why is it that in this ground, God has helped your university that things have kept working by the help and grace of God? Oh, vision 1 of 10 in 2022. And suddenly, little by little and by little. There is no first-class student without a design and a walk towards it. What you don't expect, what you don't declare, you will never become. Keep saying the negative. That's what you see. The Bible says to me and to you, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. So, it's led to you to know the dynamics of how life works. Now, if you know how life works, you know one of the things that, bring your Bible, sir, young man. This is the manual for living. In this school, you hardly buy textbooks. Because quite a number of things are in your library. You just carry your iPad. Some of you don't. Most of the books you use, they are all there. So you hardly buy textbooks. All right. No, don't no, no, hold it. But this is the manual that determines your operations. The Bible says the just shall live by faith. And what happens? How does faith come? Faith comes by hearing and understanding. Not just the Bible, which is letter, but the word of God, which is by revelation. So the question is this. If my entire life depends on this, for some people, as I'm saying, I say, no, it wasn't the Bible. No, no, I don't, I don't, there's nothing inside. Okay, good luck, there's nothing inside. Don't worry. When the siege of life starts coming in your direction, many of you have coverings of your parents. 
the prayers of your parents, the sacrifice of your parents, all working for you, and they'll keep working. Just in a little while, you'll pay the bills yourself. And when you are ready to pay the bills, then the question is this. How much have you developed yourself in understanding how it works? How prosperity works? How healing works? How having a marital bliss works? How to have it in your work or your career works? Now, thank God for very good degrees. Thank God for excellent degrees. But when charisma is not backed up with character, it will crash. Just a matter of time, it will crash. So, oh, you could carry the microphone and talk, and everybody is so, so, is so fluent. Yes, thank you. But when it's not backed with integrity, it's only a matter of time, it will go down like a pack of cards. So listen to me. Everybody raise your Bible if you came to church with it at all. By next week, I pray that you will not be caught without your Bible. <laughs> raise your Bible if you are in church with it. Say it after me. This is the word of God. And in this lies what makes me walk. Lord, Help me to find out how things will work in my life. Please put down your Bible. The more of this you have, the more of things work for you. The less of understanding you have. That's why he said faith comes by hearing and understanding the word of God. Understanding, understanding. The Ethiopian eunuch asked, was asked, understanding what thou readest? He said, how can I accept a man help me? Now listen to me. What am I doing and what do I do at every time? What does God's servant do for every privileged member of the church? Is the help of God to release, to have understanding of the word of God. For young people who have understanding, they have seen the help of God for others, possibly in 10 years' time before they have the understanding. But before then, they would have suffered a lot. Suffered a lot. Life would have painted upon them blue, black, any color that he wishes to. You know why? When they were privileged to learn this, they were not. Someone said, I'm still young. Oh, yes, you're still young. At 18. Still consider yourself young? It's no problem. Oh, allow me to play out my time. No problem. Play it all. You destroy it or it destroys you. The beer will soon stare you in the face. Two ways. You destroy it or it destroys you. There are no two ways option. Let me tell your neighbor, build your faith. Tap another person sleeping around you. Build your faith. Sleepy people don't build anything. Say it, say it to someone. Sleepy people don't build anything. Like the way that young man is. <laughs> a little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of hands. Now, what comes after? Let me tap your neighbor. May poverty not come to your quarters. Please tap somebody next to you. May poverty not come to your quarters. That young man come and collect your Bible. God bless you. Clap for him. He has given me his Bible. The Bible is neat and it's good. I like it, but let it find expression in your heart, boy. That's all it takes. I have one Bible, if you see it, it's very rough because it has been marked. I have plenty Bibles. I can't count them. 
but marked and marked and marked with dates and encounters and revelations that came just one word. Come on, say one word. Come on, say one word. At 22, God's servant only caught one word. 1976, September, oh, what was it? Seeking first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. The interest of God's kingdom, then watch it. Now, have anybody now, I want you to go and think. A scripture says, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added. That is, everybody is looking for something else. God is going to make it an addition in your life. Is the word of God so potent? What should I be chasing in my life? Why some people will keep chasing money to look like a mirage? The closer you get, the further it goes. The closer you get, the further it goes. I pray that in your own life, may every of your desire come true. Amen. Did I hear believing amen there? Amen. So faith has how it works. Life has how it works. So it's led to you to, if you must know how this machine works, it takes you to piece by piece. Remove all the components and look into it to know, okay, this is how it works. And without that, maybe for a mechanical engineering student now, you can just look, okay, this is an air blower or coolant. That's just all. It's making noise and it's blowing breeze. How is that breeze coming out? until you have dissected this machine and understands the principle, then all. Now, listen to me. If your faith must work and must be alive, the word of God must become your companion. And precept upon precept, line upon line, a little here and a little there, you have access to it. I pray that this morning, that everyone under the sound of my voice, by the help of the Spirit of God, may you have access to the Word of God. Did I hear believing amen there? We have said faith without works is dead. Faith is fake if it lacks proofs. It is your proof that validates faith. Faith is most the potent force in the whole universe. Now, now, is somebody not said to just ask, why is po most potent force in the universe? It calls for some thinking. Let me tell your neighbor, think. Tap your neighbor and tell him or her, think. Tap somebody on your left and your right. Tell that person, think! Look for the ears of that individual. Scream inside of it and tell him, think. Uh -huh. Some people. I said, look for somebody left to you again. Pull the ears and tell him, think. <laughs> Praise the Lord. What is faith? Faith is not waiting for God to walk. Let me tell your neighbor, faith is not waiting for God to walk. I want the entire congregation to say it. Faith is not waiting for God to walk. Say it one more time. Faith is not waiting for God to walk. Faith is putting the word of God to walk. Continue. Faith is putting the word of God to work so as to commit its integrity to perform. Oh, somebody says, I'm waiting on God. You may be wasting. I'm waiting on God. You may be wasting. Now, assuming, now, a student, now, maybe one of your colleagues, he says, Oh, don't worry. You are going to Covenant University and the person stays back at home and said, I am waiting on God. Now, in four years' time, now, two of you had dreams. 
He said his big dreams. Oh, I want to be a big businessman. I want to be, to accomplish something in life. He makes certain declarations, like many people do. Then, thank God he becomes, or he's a Christian, you are also a Christian, and that person says, oh yes, I am thanking God. I'm going to wait on God, and he's going to do great things in my life. So first year, he's waiting, he's praying, he's waiting, he's praying, he's attending to church, he's doing everything. But he's not taking any positive step in the direction of his desire. You are praying, you are waiting, and you are going to school. And he is waiting, and he's not going anywhere. Now, faith is putting the word of God to work. Now listen to me. He said, though thy beginning was small, but thy latter end should greatly increase. The people that we see increase and enlargement are those who are, have ability to start small. Come on, say start small. So I look at the big things. Oh, yes, but I have faith enough to start small. Now, how many of you started life at your size? A young lady gave a testimony at our chaplaincy meeting yesterday while I was talking about the efficacy of communion. How many people have been impacted? And this young lady said, from the age of eight, my parents have been infusing me with the communion. You know why? She was born with a defect in her spinal cord, which could have made her a bent girl all her life. Surgery, they said, was the solution. But there was faith enough in the parents who put the word of God to work. And they kept now, because the life of Christ is in the blood of Jesus. And kept infusing her. Giving her that medication. Giving her that, that all-purpose drug. Giving her that strength of heaven. And little by little by little by little, I'm sure she'll be 16, 17 or 18 now. Maybe 10 years ago, the consistency of God's word, she has not gone for the surgery and uh, she is not bent low today. Everything in her spinal cord has arranged itself. Some, they are waiting for God to work on their academics. Failed in Alpha semester. Tried to patch up in Omega semester. And is in another alpha now. He will not think. She will not think. And put her life in order. You have just the last semester. And possibly for some too. But it's the person who say, Okay God. And moreover. You know my, my scare is this. Some people as they are now. They will disrespect God. They will do many things. Some in class. Now, I'm, I'm not surprised that some individuals fail. I come to general courses here. I walk around during lectures. And I see individuals doing completely something else. When a lecture is going on. And you know one of the, the balance is not an undoing. But it's something that when you don't recognize the balance. Your notes are always given to you. But do you know? That without getting the foundation of what is being taught, you can read that note over and over and over again and understand nothing. Why? You miss the foundation, you miss the explanation, but you thought notes were all. And since you are not going to write the notes, we don't write notes in Covenant University, that is the reason why many people are in imputed laziness. In my days, there is no lecturer. The most they give you is handouts. But you will write notes in the class. As he speaks, no wonder today that many people are very weak with comporting and writing or saying something. I pray that somebody will wake up from his slumber today the slumber of poverty in academics 
the slumber of poverty in his or her life in every ramification and awake to the consciousness of the help of God. Let me hear your believing amen. Did I hear a believing amen? In John chapter 21, something happened there. And from verse 5, John chapter 21, from verse 5, please can everybody read, one, two, go. Please, church, everybody read it loud and clear. Can you see a very wonderful father? Children, have ye any meat? Children, have ye any progress? Children, have ye any healing? Children. But what happened? They said, no. We don't have it. We are hungry. We are thirsty. We don't have it. Next verse. Everyone read. Verse 6. Hey, children. If you don't have any meat, I have an instruction for you. Cast the net on the right side of the ship, not the left side, not the front, not the back. The right side. The right side. The right side. The right side. Cast the net on the right side. Cast your academics on the right side. Cast the health issue on the right side. Cast the siege issue on the right side. It is only the instruction of the right side that will bring you what you desire. Children, have ye any meat? No, we don't have what we are supposed to have. No, we are famished. No, we are thirsty. But he said, hey, cast thee on the right side. And what happened to them? And ye shall find. No, verse 6, still go back. And he said, they cast therefore. What did they do? Verse 6, can you read the second day? He said, they cast therefore, and now they were not able to draw it for the multitude of fishes. I pray that someone will have multitude of testimonies this semester. Yeah. I said, someone will have multitude of testimonies this semester. Yeah. I've shared the testimony over and again of individuals who have God is directing. Now, let me ask your neighbor. Have you ever heard from God? Please tap your neighbor. Tap your neighbor. Have you ever heard anything from God? Because some sit and nothing imports over. They have never heard anything enough to stay. I pray that today, by the good hand of the Lord, you will not wait and waste. Did I hear a believing amen there? I said you will not wait and waste. I said nobody will waste here. Yeah. Jeremiah chapter 32 and in verse 17. Jeremiah 32 verse 17. Jeremiah 32 verse 17. Can we read one to go? Ah, Lord God, behold, thou hast made the heavens and the earth by thy great power and stretch out arm. Is there anything too hard for thee? Our Lord God, thou hast made the heavens and the earth by thy great power. Come on, sing it, everybody. Our Lord God, thou hast made the heavens and the earth by thy outstretched arm. Nothing, nothing is too difficult for thee. Oh, yes, nothing is too difficult for thee. Great and great and mighty God. Oh, yes, great in counsel, mighty in thee. Mighty in thee. Nothing, nothing, absolutely nothing. Nothing is too difficult for thee. I want the old church to sing that song. Put this, the scripture on the board. We are going to sing it. All right. So, church. 
Let's sing. One to go. Okay? Loud and clear, everybody. Church? I'm only hearing the choir point. The words are clear on the... Everybody sing. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Everybody this way sing. The song is clear. It's on the board. So everybody can sing it. Hello. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Now, can we have everyone sing the song, Jeremiah 32, verse 17, loud and clear all across this sanctuary? Let's go. I'm not going to use the mic, so I won't overshadow your voice. Let's sing it. One, two, go. Louder and clearer. Oh, yes. So, yes. I'm not hearing from this way. Only this side. Everybody, quiet. Please sing, sing, sing. We'll do, we'll do an a cappella now. Every portion of the chapel will sing. All right. So, let's start from this side. One, two, go. Yes, next. All right. I'm the choir director now. Um, I won't tell you what I'll do, but I'll do something quite good. You will enjoy yourself today. Just don't sing. You know I have your dynamics. All right, let's have it this side. Heavens and the earth. My Power. Okay, this side. Our Lord God, thou art outstretched. Um, let's go here. Nothing. Everybody here, sing. Oh, yes, great and mighty God. Everybody here. Counsel mighty indeed. Mighty indeed. Everybody here. Nobody knows the song here? Okay. And the word is, is on the board? Where? What is that? That's the word is. The next one? Okay. Sing the one on the board now. All right. Let's go. Hello, our Lord God, thou art made the heavens and the earth by thy great power. Nothing is too difficult for thee. Nothing is too difficult. Now, it's quite clear there, there is an excerpt of it. So I want you to sing it right now. Yes, let's go quickly. By great power. Yes, this side. God bless you all. Oh, yeah. Let's hear your voice. By the outstretched hand. Next group here. Okay. Nothing is to. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. This side. Great and mighty God. Great in counsel. Mighty indeed. Okay. Mighty indeed. Oh, nothing. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. Everybody. Start. Our Lord God here. Our Lord God, God in the heavens and the earth. Choir, let's sing for me. Our Lord God, God in the heavens and the earth. By the outstretched hand. Oh, yes, oh God. 
Oh, yes. Great and mighty. Oh, yeah. Nothing, nothing, oh. Put your hands together for yourselves. You have done well. Now listen to this testimony. I can't be sick. I used to suffer from malaria attacks quite often. I had quit quite a lot of mal malaria drugs behind my bed, which I took often. I have a sister who was a nurse advised me to make sure I took my drugs regularly because of the frequency of malaria attacks. But when I came here, that was the church, in April 1995 Breakthrough Seminar, the bishop taught us on the mystery of the supernatural. On getting home, I went over my notes again. And then I saw, ye are gods, and all of you are the children of the Most High. I said to myself, should a God be sick? Should the children of the Most High be taking drugs? No. It is not possible. I continued studying the Bible again, and I saw he took your infirmities, and by his stripes ye were healed. I saw this was written in past tense. Then I thought to myself that I must then be a thief if I am still suffering from malaria. I immediately decided to drop it. I came out of my room and declared, from this hour, I cannot be sick. The bishop is not lying. As from this hour, I cannot be sick. My mom said, what are you saying? And I told her, I know what I'm saying. The devil came to try me by one affliction, by one, afflicting me with sickness again, but I determined not to take my, any drugs. At a point, my mom was afraid and called everyone. I told them that what I wasn't sick and that I was okay. And since then, I don't know how Eddie feels again. Faith is not just believing God. Faith is obeying God to prove what we believe Him so we can commit Him to, uh, to His good promises. That's why I read that testimony. Can you say this after me one more time? Faith is not just believing God. Faith is obeying God to prove that we believe him so as to commit him to make good his promises. I pray that God will make good his promises in your life. Let me hear your believing amen. Then finally, faith is a spiritual explosive. Let me tell somebody, faith is a spiritual explosive. Say it loud and clear, everybody. Say it loud and clear, everyone. That destroys the powers of the enemy and establishes dominion of the saints. The enemy is Satan and is the wicked. And he has been sorting to save someone here like wheat. But Jesus said, as he told Peter, I have prayed for you that your faith fail not. The Hebrew boys in Daniel chapter 3 had an encounter. They were told to bow down in idolatry. But remember, the Hebrew boy stood by the word of the Lord and said, Hey, Nebuchadnezzar, you are the king. But we have made up our mind that we will not bow for this graven image. 
We know that our God has ability to save us. But in case he does not, we will not still bow. I pray that for young people who are here today, you will not be bowing down to idols. Did I hear believing amen there? I said you will not be bowing down to idols. Let me hear your shout of amen. He said, above all, taking the shield of faith. Let me tell somebody, raise your right hand and say, taking the shield of faith. Raise your right hand and say, taking the shield of faith. He said, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. Young man, come. Yes, come. Who has a biro? Come with a biro. Anybody with a biro? Please also do something. I discovered a lot of persons don't have any writing materials. You know why ma most of you have issues in writing? Or you are lazy in writing? I think I'm also going to talk to the chancellor about that somehow. I discovered that, you know, you use your tabs and everything. So, you find it difficult to write. You mostly will not write anything. Because you don't write in class. So, chapel seems to be the only place where you are writing. And some don't have anything where it's called notebook, writing, anything. I told some students in the chaplaincy, I said, God speaks once. And he said, once has he spoken, twice have I heard. Gadgets can crash. Where, where is, where's your gadget? Somebody bring out your own in your bag. Bring it out. I'm not, I know you have it there. Okay. This iPod can crash. Let me have this notebook. This one does not crash. Yes. Now, shh, hello. The probability of this one getting lost and finding it the probability of this one getting destroyed, the more. Now, most of you, you know why some lack encounters? They never write down their encounters. There's someone that I'm talking to now. All I'm saying in this service is very relevant to you. But if you won't take note of it, just immediately after this service, just like the word of God say, the birds of the air will come and steal it. He doesn't remember anything. In the second service, I'll bring some notes. I told them I was going to show things that I've written 20 years ago, 26 years ago, 30 years ago. You know why? When God told me something at the age of 21, I'm 48 by God's grace now. I have not forgotten what he has told me. There are many of you who can't remember when, what God told you when you were coming to Covenant University. You know why? You didn't write it down. The situations around encompassed you and you have forgotten about it. May the Lord help you in Jesus' name. Now, bring your Bible. I call this a fiery dart. Try and do something to it. Are you hearing me? Now, what am I doing? I want to target your heart. Now, so what do you do? What do you do? So try and do something. Okay, that's the dart. <laughs> now, listen. The enemy comes at each time. He said, taking up the shield of faith, wherein thou be able to quench all the fiery dart. So he says, oh, could we try the dart of kidney disease? So, he shares the symptoms. And somebody said, No! That can't be my portion. And the devil says, oh, I didn't know you understand that. Another person says, oh, it's only a symptom of probability according as much of the doctor we know. But somebody has accepted it. Maybe somebody even dreamt. And some Joseph the dreamers are here. Who will tell you that their dreams come to pass? They won't see dream of promotion. They won't see dream of advancement. It's only dream of accident. Dream of death. Dream of which pursuing them. 
dream of one evil or the other. They are never prophets of good, only prophets of evil. You, do you know why the enemy always comes to you in your dream? Because he knows you will accept it. So when you accept what he has put in your subconscious, you empower it to become, to give fruition. So, can you take symptoms of malaria? It looks like headache. So, wave it up. Oh yeah? What do you do? I said wave it up. You want it to come? Wave it up, young man. Wave it up. Or you want, maybe that's what you are doing naturally. Anything they give you, you collect. <laughs> okay. So, can you wave it up? Oh yeah? Shield of faith. <laughs> you know, some individuals here, you know what they do? They, sit down. Please, put your hands together for the young man. You know what they do? Some people actually just open their chest and they say, becoming. <laughs> and they, they have carried more luggage than what they could carry. Taking the shield of faith. Come and say the shield of faith. It is only the shield of faith that can quench the fiery dart of the enemy. You don't have capacity. Who are you? The devil is 2,000 years old with wisdom. But you can douse every one of his things over your life with the shield of faith. So he's saying, take malaria symptoms of headache. You say, I cannot. God's servant went to a doctor and they were checking him. And they said, ha, sir, there's high blood pressure. Guess what he said? High blood pressure? No, I can't. My hand and your hand is touching the gadget. So it must have been reading our blood together. So he dropped high blood pressure with the doctor there and walked away from the hospital. Humorously, he dropped high blood pressure. Now, some people, young people, have high blood pressure. As I'm speaking now, there is somebody in this service now who at age 18 is already having high blood pressure. Why are you allowing the devil to torment you until you take the shield of faith? You can't quench that fairy dart. So, it's over to you. This morning, take up the shield of faith. Oh, all the fairy darts of the enemy. But I pray that today, every fairy dart will be destroyed in Jesus' name. Faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of the Lord. Please, can you bow your heads?